The year was around 200 AD when I, Marcus Claudius Tacitus, drew my first breath in the verdant lands of Cappadocia in modern Turkey amidst the grandeur of the Roman Empire. Born into the prestigious Claudian genes, my lineage traced back to illustrious ancestors who had left indelible marks on Roman history. My upbringing was steeped in tradition and privilege, nurtured within the confines of a noble household. My early years were spent amidst the bustle of Rome, a city that pulsed with life and ambition. Yet it was within the sanctum of our familial domus where I found solace and learning. My parents, both esteemed members of the Roman elite, imparted upon me the values of duty, honor, and wisdom. My father, a distinguished senator, regaled me with tales of the Republic's glory days instilling in me a deep reverence for the ideals of governance and education, paramount in the upbringing of a patrician youth, shaped my intellect and character. Under the tutelage of learned tutors, I delved into the annals of history, philosophy, and rhetoric. The writings of Cicero and Seneca became my companions, guiding me through the labyrinth of human thought and aspiration. It was through these scholarly pursuits that I honed my skills, preparing myself for the weighty responsibilities that lay ahead. Yet amidst the pursuit of knowledge and refinement, familial bonds remained the cornerstone of my existence. My siblings, companions in mischief and solidarity, shared in the joys and tribulations of our privileged upbringing. Together, we reveled in the splendors of our ancestral villa, a sprawling estate nestled amidst the verdant hills of Cappadocia. Here amidst the whispering pines and fragrant orchards, we forged memories that would endure a lifetime. As the years unfurled, destiny beckoned, promising a path fraught with peril and glory. Little did I know that the call of duty would soon lead me to ascend the gilded throne of Rome, shaping the course of history in ways unforeseen. The year was 275 AD, a time of tumult and uncertainty within the Roman Empire. The demise of Emperor Aurelian cast a shadow of instability across the realm, as rival factions vied for supremacy amidst the chaos of succession. It was amidst this tempest of intrigue and ambition that fate thrust me into the crucible of power. At the family villa, amidst the opulent trappings of our ancestral home, I found myself ensconced in the company of Empress Ulpia Severina. Her regal bearing belied the burdens of rulership, born with grace and fortitude in the wake of her husband's passing. In the hallowed halls of the vestibulum, where shadows danced upon marble pillars, we convened to deliberate upon the affairs of state. Over goblets of wine, amidst the fragrant incense of the atrium, I proffered my counsel to the Empress, drawing upon the wisdom garnered from years of contemplation and study. Together, we sought to navigate the treacherous currents of imperial politics, forging alliances and brokering peace amidst the clamor of war. It was amidst this backdrop of intrigue and camaraderie that the mantle of leadership was thrust upon me. The Venerable Senate, custodians of Rome's ancient traditions, bestowed upon me the honor of ascending the hallowed throne of Augustus. With solemn reverence, I accepted this sacred trust, pledging to safeguard the sanctity of the Roman state with every fiber of my being. Thus, amidst the resplendent splendors of the imperial palace, I assumed the mantle of emperor, entrusted with the sacred duty of guiding Rome through the trials that lay ahead. Little did I know that my reign would be marked by strife and tribulation, testing the mettle of my resolve and the resilience of the empire itself. The year was 275 AD, and the weight of imperial authority rested heavily upon my old shoulders. At 75, I, Tacitus, Emperor of Rome, I ascended the throne with a solemn vow to uphold the virtues of justice, wisdom, and strength. Yet, 
The challenges that awaited me were as formidable as they were numerous. From the outset, my reign was beset by the spectre of conflict and unrest. Beyond the borders of our great empire, barbarian hordes amassed, eager to test the resolve of Rome's legions. In the eastern provinces, where the sun kissed the sands of distant deserts, I marshaled our forces to repel the encroaching threats of Persia and her allies. At the heart of the empire, amidst the bustling streets of Rome herself, I sought to quell the fires of discontent that smoldered within the populace. Economic turmoil and social upheaval threatened to undermine the very foundations of our society, prompting me to enact reforms aimed at restoring stability and prosperity to our cherished homeland. In the sacred halls of the Senate, where the voices of Rome's noblest sons echoed through time, I labored tirelessly to forge consensus and unity amongst the fractious factions of the ruling elite. Through diplomacy and statesmanship, I sought to mend the fissures that threatened to tear our beloved Republic asunder, binding the disparate elements of our society into a cohesive whole. Yet amidst the clamor of war and politics, I found solace in the pursuit of knowledge and enlightenment. In the quiet confines of my study, amidst shelves laden with ancient tomes and scrolls, I pondered the mysteries of existence and the nature of power itself. It was here, amidst the flickering light of oil lamps and the scent of parchment, that I sought to chart a course for Rome's future guided by reason and virtue. As the years unfolded, my reign bore witness to both triumph and tragedy, as victories on the battlefield were tempered by the loss of cherished allies and comrades. Yet through it all, I remained steadfast in my commitment to the welfare of Rome and her people, striving to leave behind a legacy worthy of remembrance. The year was 276 AD, and the twilight of my reign cast a somber pall over the empire. Despite my best efforts to safeguard Rome's prosperity and security, the specter of mortality loomed ever closer, its shadow lengthening with each passing day. It was amidst this gathering gloom that fate dealt its final cruel hand. Rumors of treachery and betrayal whispered through the marble corridors of the Imperial Palace, shrouding the seat of power in an air of suspicion and fear. In the dead of night, beneath the watchful gaze of the stars, I succumbed to the ravages of illness, my mortal frame unable to withstand the relentless onslaught of disease. As the lifeblood ebbed from my veins, I found myself confronted by the inexorable march of destiny, my legacy left hanging in the balance. Though I had sought to shepherd Rome through the tempest of adversity, my efforts had proven insufficient to stem the tide of fate. In the aftermath of my passing, the Empire plunged into turmoil once more, as ambitious pretenders vied for the vacant throne with swords drawn and ambitions laid bare. Yet, amidst the chaos of succession, the memory of my reign endured, a beacon of hope amidst the encroaching darkness. Though my mortal form may have been consigned to the annals of history, my spirit lives on in the hearts and minds of those who still hold fast to the ideals of Rome. Though I may have faltered in the face of adversity, my legacy endures as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the enduring power of the Roman Empire. As the sands of time continue to slip through the hourglass of eternity, the legacy of Tacitus, Emperor of Rome, endures as a testament to the indomitable spirit of the Roman people. Though my reign may have been brief, its impact reverberates through the annals of history, shaping the destiny of nations and inspiring future generations to greatness. In the corridors of power, where the echoes of my footsteps still linger, my name is whispered with reverence and respect, a symbol of integrity and wisdom in an age of uncertainty and strife. 
Though my mortal form may have returned to the dust from whence it came, my legacy lives on in the hearts and minds of those who still cling to the ideals of justice, honor, and duty. For as long as Rome endures, so too shall the memory of Tacitus, Emperor of Rome, burn bright amidst the ashes of oblivion. Though the pages of history may fade and crumble with the passage of time, my name shall endure as a beacon of hope and inspiration for all who dare to dream of a better world. And so, as I bid farewell to the tumult of mortal existence and embrace the eternal embrace of oblivion, I do so with the knowledge that my legacy shall endure long after I have passed into the realm of legend. For I am Tacitus, Emperor of Rome, and my name shall live on until the end of days. The legacy of Tacitus, Emperor of Rome, transcends the bounds of time and mortality, weaving itself into the very fabric of history with threads of honor, wisdom, and valor. As the years unfurl like banners in the wind, my name remains etched upon the annals of Rome, a testament to the enduring power of leadership tempered by virtue. In the wake of my passing, the Empire faced trials and tribulations aplenty, yet the lessons of my reign served as a guiding light amidst the encroaching darkness. Though my mortal form may have succumbed to the ravages of time, my spirit lives on in the hearts of those who cherish the ideals of justice and righteousness. From the marble halls of the Senate to the humblest hamlets of the Empire, my name is whispered with reverence and awe, a symbol of stability and strength in an age of uncertainty. Through diplomacy and statesmanship, I sought to forge alliances and foster peace amidst the clamor of war, leaving behind a legacy of unity and cooperation that endures to this day. Yet perhaps my greatest legacy lies not in the grandeur of conquest or the splendor of palaces, but in the hearts and minds of those who still cling to the dream of a better tomorrow. For in the end, it is not the monuments of stone and marble that define a ruler's legacy, but the lives they touch and the hearts they inspire. And so, as the sun sets upon the empire I once called home, I take solace in the knowledge that my legacy shall endure, a beacon of hope amidst the ever-shifting sands of time, for I am Tacitus, Emperor of Rome, and though my mortal form may have faded into obscurity, my spirit shall forever soar upon the wings of immortality. Thank you for watching. Our channel, known as the Renaissance Spirit, is dedicated to the pursuits of a just, equitable, and humanitarian world. Video topics encompass areas including history, politics, religion, personal development, society, culture, social and environmental justice, and other topics of liberal arts and sciences, including ancient Rome and the Roman Empire, which is a great comparison and contrast of the modern world. Topics perfect for the true modern polymath. The Renaissance ushered in a golden age and the pursuit of knowledge, knowledge both lost to time and yet to be discovered. It gave birth to the Enlightenment and the Age of Reason. Embracing truth, knowledge, and an understanding and compassion for humanity opens up the world to each of us, individually, and improves all of humanity, affording us the opportunity to be better stewards of the Earth and to each other. The Renaissance spirit, more than just a philosophy or style, but a style for living, learning, growing, and thinking. Please subscribe, turn on notifications, and share. If you're looking to explore and experience what life has to offer, I'm sure you'll enjoy the other videos on my channel. Please peruse and let me know in the comments what you get out of them and what other videos you'd like to see. But first, please take the quiz next to see if you're a Renaissance spirit. Live the Renaissance spirit.